This is Donna with More Than a Review, and I'm excited to be here with Rosemary. Um, I'm going to get to interview her, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself and about the books that she's written. Um, so, Rosemary, let's kind of start with just telling us a little bit about yourself and how you even came about writing. Well, I grew up in Fort Worth, Texas, with grandparents from Louisiana who seemed to be very natural storytellers, <laughs> and they would come to visit. And, you know, I heard all these tales from this angle yeah. looking up, but. Um, I was a doll player, and I think that's a, a good practice oh. for young writers to think about story and character and scene setting and all of that. So I mean, that that's my earliest influence. Yeah. I started making up stories to entertain yeah. myself and wrote my first novel when I was in the sixth grade. Oh. <laughs> it was a medieval adventure tale. Oh my goodness. I read one book about the Middle Ages for children. and. Um, took off with <laughs> an abandon I've never been able to replicate. Oh. I would love to be able to write like that again, naming chapters before I'd written them. <laughs> that is so cute. I always say when people say kids don't like to read, I'm like, they haven't found their favorite book yet, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, and it tickled me years later because I write Southern Gothic, uh, or Southern Gothic mystery, typically, and um, Mark Twain famously blamed the Civil War on novelists such as Sir Walter Scott firing the South up with these uh, romantic dreams of knights and ladies and all of that. And so my medieval adventure kind of segued into only Charlotte <laughs> in New Orleans in 1880. <laughs> well, so tell us a little bit about Only Charlotte. It's a beautiful cover. Oh, thank you. Um, the book started a long time ago, and I typically, because my life's been busy with teaching and working full-time in various positions, and raising children and helping with grandchildren now, I'll get a manuscript box and start throwing ideas into the box mm -hmm. until it begins to fill up. And then, <laughs> you know, you spill it, like reading the entrails. You <laughs> spill it out and see where the pattern is. and. That process really became a metaphor to me of women in this situation I had created for Only Charlotte, feeling boxed in oh. and finding ways to break out. And the narrator, Lenore, um, she is a woman of means now after she's outlived three husbands and gotten a little wealthier with each one. <laughs> um, yeah, she said the first one was for passion, the second one was for progeny, she had twins, and the third one was for profit. But uh, she takes in her brother, who's recently widowed and lost his wife and child to childbirth. And um, so he's feeling boxed in as well mm -hmm. by his grief yeah. and starting over again. He moves down from another city to join her in New Orleans mm -hmm. and she and he and her housekeeper, who's also an important character, Ella, mm -hmm. help very much to free Charlotte as mm -hmm. well. So they're all, they're, there's a lot of warmth with those central characters yeah. and then there's a lot of dastardly evil <laughs> <laughs> with, with some more corrupt people. Oh that's funny. So um, do your characters kind of take over or do you like know how it's going to play out? The, on the Belchicon panel yesterday yeah. we were talking about you know are you an outliner or a pantser and I think yeah. so many people are in between mm. and my playwriting interest and background I have a few plays Oh, that have been produced helps me see a story in that three-act structure which mm. people use in screenwriting, novel writing, yeah. and playwriting of course to think about the, the setup you promise in the first <laughs> chapter or so even yeah. in the first paragraph there's a promise and then um, you have the muddle in the middle yeah. and the payoff yeah. at the end and so um, so it's just natural to think of a story in that way. There's so many things that happen while you're writing and creating it. And I'll tend to say the dialogue out loud and think about, well, what would my, what the character's face look like saying those lines and, and really get into it. So I don't write in coffee shops because um. I have to be <laughs> in more private surroundings. They would think act, you're crazy. Act out 
<laughs> the story. Yes. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So is there anything you would tell your younger running self? Oh, I wish that I had had more exposure mm. and training in story structure mm. when I started. In literature classes, you know, in high school, typically we would talk about lofty things like theme and <laughs> metaphor and symbolism. And those are all wonderful and I use them. But to really understand about the journey that you take your mm. your readers on yeah. and, and how to structure that to build to a dramatic yeah. situation and a climax. Yeah. I would I would love to have known more early on. Not that it inhibited me in any way in sixth grade when I wrote <laughs> <laughs> when I wrote my first book. <laughs> but it seemed like I dropped off for a while and then had to pick it back up again. So do you feel like your writing um, gives you the ability to blend things that you like in real life? In yes, life? very much. And I, you know, I've always loved art, music, theater, reading, of course. Yeah. And in Only Charlotte, the narrator, Lenore, who takes some liberties with her narration on scenes she may not have directly witnessed, but she can imagine them. <laughs> uh, she calls it poetic license, of course. She's taken out to see a play by her latest suitor. And so she sees William Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale and becomes very inspired by one of the characters in the play, Paulina. And that inspiration informs some of her decisions in what she does in her story yeah. for other characters and um, so playing with with theater and novel at the same time is fun mm -hmm. I love history love New Orleans of course <laughs> who doesn't <laughs> <laughs> love Louisiana and so um, it's just it's homeland to my relatives yeah. so do you have anything else in the works I do I have a novel I'm working on now that's set in Galveston Texas and mm -hmm. East Texas around the turn of the century you know, the 1900, not, the, <laughs> yeah. not this term. I didn't know I was going to live for this one. But, so, so I'm excited about that. I was a Texan for most of my life. I live in yeah. North, North Carolina now, but um, it'll give me a chance to come back and do a little research in oh, the Gulf Coast. Good. And, good. Mm -hmm. So I always like to end um, with something fun. Anything you think readers would be surprised to know about you? Oh. Well, I'll just share something that tickled me that oh, came yeah. out from from my children. Um, the novel Before Only Charlotte, Women of Magdalene, is set in a ladies' lunatic asylum in the late 19th century, and uh, it's it's pretty dark in parts. And my one of my daughters was reading a little selection of it to her husband, and he said, "You know, your mother is really dark and twisted." <laughs> And so for quite a while, I, I just would sign my messages to them, DTM, for Dark and Twisted Mama. That was my nickname. But there's, there's a lighter side, too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, so. Donna. I enjoyed and it. We'll share um, links to her books. Thank you.